Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you are. Technology works. All right, so look, thank you very much for your time. Uh, we are diving into tokenization for digital assets. So my name is Mariano Giralt. I'm the EMEA head of digital. And it is a pleasure to have with me a super uh, panel. Uh, but before uh, I'm going through you know, asking you guys to introduce yourself, I want to thank you all. Uh, we have a full audience right now. And I want to thank you all for not being following or following the local habits here in Spain. Today is Friday. It's 4 o'clock, almost. It is siesta time, guys, and you are staying here with us. I really, we really appreciate that you are staying with us, and hopefully we are going to share with you great insights, and we are going to keep you awake, okay? So let me ask my panel members to introduce themselves. We'll start with you. Esther, please. Yeah. yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I'm very much delighted to be um, able to participate in this great conference. My name is Esther Teuber. I'm uh, part of... Uh, no, I'm a lawyer, um, and I'm part of the German legal team of AB and AMRO Bank NV, a Dutch bank. And uh, I'm uh, currently mainly working for the strategy and innovation uh, department of AB and AMRO, which is the innovation hub. And I'm part of the digital assets team of strategy and innovation. And what we mainly do is we are focusing on creating innovative, digital financial products for our clients. Very good, excellent. Is there, Joe, can you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Joe Lung. Um, yeah, very pleased to be here. I'm from JP Morgan. Um, I'm part of Onyx. So Onyx is JP Morgan's blockchain um, section. Um, I specifically am a product manager within Onyx Digital Assets. And so um, it's essentially the uh, tokenization platform for, for financial assets. Um, and that's me. Very good, Joe. Thank you very much. Prasant, please. I think mic on, Hello. moved. There you are, put it on, there you are. Can you hear me? There you are. Hi everyone, I am Prashant. I am a senior technology lead uh, for digital currencies and uh, assets uh, at uh, HSBC. Uh, so I look, out, I look after uh, build out of a uh, number of uh, DLT platforms, including tokenization, uh, and very happy and excited to be here. Very good, thank you very much, Prashant. And as you guys can see, we have a very diverse panel because we do have legal mindset, we have a product mindset, and we have as well a technology mindset. So I think it's going to be very interesting to hear your perspective, guys, from your different uh, areas of expertise on the, on the tokenization space. Okay? So the first question I want to, to ask you is, um, tell me about the benefits. Why? Why do we want to tokenize things? Why tokenization on digital assets? Why are we doing that? What are the benefits? So we start with you, Esther. Yeah, well, I guess, um, I guess that tokenization and blockchain technology in, in general can address some of the barriers that currently hamper the capital markets. Um, and I guess one of the main benefits is definitely that it comes with significant cost reductions. Um, and that is mainly driven by, well, fewer intermediaries that you have, um, and of course, lower fixed cost. And that definitely goes with digitization and automation, I assume. And um, secondly, I assume that also um, the um, transparency that you have with or could have with, uh, with digital assets is also one of the, um, definitely one of the benefit, the advantages of, of tokenized assets. Um, so, for example, you can, you can um, have uh, ESG reporting within the digital asset, and that's definitely one of the advantages that comes with, with tokenization. All right, these are great uh, two points. So efficiencies and transparency. Joe, what do you have? Effici any, any benefits that you see on tokenization? Yeah, sure. So um, the way we, uh, the way I think about it, 
Um, I certainly agree with uh, the points you raised, but definitely the, the, the efficiency side of things, providing liquidity where previously there wasn't liquidity, and then also discovering new utility where we haven't had it before. And this is where we can be innovative with the technology. Uh, in, in many ways, we have a, an opportunity with tokenization to re-engineer many of the like financial systems and markets that we have in such a way that we can, um, for example, we can um, uh, instantaneous transfer of value, we can fractionalize assets in ways we haven't done before, um, and we can also provide transparency. It's, the, the benefits are quite broad. Um, it, what it tends to fall down to is what area you're actually looking at to, to tokenize and which benefits make sense for a particular use case. That's great, great points. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, Prasant, from your tech mindset, right, what do you see? What are the benefits from your perspective? Uh, so yeah, definitely agree with the great points raised there. And I think um, I, if I could answer it in um, this fashion, so from client perspective, of course, there's this accessibility point that a certain customer segment is now able to access assets which we were, they were not able to before. So whether they are new products or new varieties of product, which are more efficient and more secure, right? And um, uh, then... Um, Tokenization is a great enabler as well, right? So you capture the value, uh, created the tokens. Um, that in itself is a benefit, but it also enables future benefits, like the advances in the industry around interconnectivity and interoperability. You could then use that asset, if eligible, post as collateral, right? So that's on the client side. Now looking more internally within the organization, I think it's a great catalyst to have great conversations with your business, to start those conversations. So DLT as a technology and tokenization as a, as a, as a capability lets those creative juices flowing. So you then actually look at a number of ideas, given our capabilities. What are the new products we want to offer, right? And uh, given our capabilities, um, whether we need to sort of enhance our capabilities or build new capabilities, in order to um, uh, uh, sort of meet, uh, to realize those ideas uh, on back of uh, the trigger that uh, now we have through tokenization. Great, great points. Yeah, if, if, I, if I may, um, what is also an advantage and that haven't, hasn't been mentioned yet um, is of course atomic settlement. So we can also have delivery versus payment within, yeah, Seconds, yeah, and that's that's definitely also one of the big big advantages of tokenizing securities. That's great, guys. You thank you very much. You guys are sharing a lot of benefits from the tokenization point of view. Now I want to ask you the difficult question, or maybe maybe I'm going to ask you as much as you can share because when we were connecting and we were brainstorming about the projects, right? As much as you can share in your organization, which projects? are you working with on the tokenization side, right? Don't share with me NDA's stuff, right? Don't share, you know, but you know, keep push yourself a little bit more and share a little bit, right? So what's going on? We start with you maybe, Joe. Uh, yeah, sure. So really I'm gonna, I'll, um, I'm probably only gonna scratch the surface and I'm gonna do a speed run of what we've done within tokenization. So um, it was around 2018, we simulated a bond uh, 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 issuing a bond on blockchain. It was a simulation. It was, we, we did it to learn. Basically, what we learned from that when we issued the bond, we wanted, exactly to what Esther said, we, we realized we needed cash on chain as well. So we were able to carry out um, uh, like a DVP. So from that, we built JP Morgan Coin Systems, which is our cash on chain system. And so in 2020, we started working with our markets DLT team within JP Morgan. So not Onyx that built it like originally, we, we built it in collaboration with a team. Um, who were the experts in that market space, and they built the, uh, what's called the digital financing app. Um, and essentially that is a, it, it's for intraday repo. So we were carrying out intraday repos where we weren't previously able to, to do so. So again, it's DVP, um, you know, it, it, it helps you manage uh, intraday liquidity, um, reduces the requirement for um, uncollateralized loans. And we do this like internally, but we also do it with our clients. And so since, um, yeah, since, since the launch in 2020, we've done a roughly $500 billion in, in, in trades um, internally and externally. So it's like, it's no joke. We're sort of realizing these benefits 
Um, and, and actually, credit to the team that, that runs the application. We run the platform, Onyx Digital Assets is the platform, but credit to the team that um, yeah, runs the application because they're just seeing an uptick in people who are finding use cases and needs for this intraday liquidity, so that's great. Um, next, we're working on um, tokenizing, so it's called the TCN, so Tokenized Collateral Network, so it's another application on our uh, tokenization platform. Um, essentially, the idea there is that we're gonna tokenize um, MMFs, so money market funds, so that we can use them in title transfer and uh, as to pledge as collateral um, for margin for, de for derivative trades. So that's sort of the next plan there. Um, so far, I think on the, on the digital financing app, we've tokenized US treasuries, US dollars obviously, so cash, we've done CMOs, uh, we've done MBS, and we plan to continue sort of expanding the set of assets that we accept for collateral um, uh, you know, to where our clients need. Um, yeah, and we want to keep going. The other thing I would add, so this is outside of Onyx Digital Assets, but still within Onyx. Um, we did something pretty cool last year that we're really proud of. We, um, we did the first institutional DeFi trade. Um, we carried out a DeFi trade on Polygon using Aave Arc in collaboration with MASS, so the Monetary Authority of Singapore, and SBI, where we tokenized US dollars and Japanese yen and carried out like a pilot swap trade. So we're really proud of like, the work that we've achieved in that space, and we're trying to sort of push ourselves to, to, to embrace new technologies and figure out new use cases. Um, and yeah, I'll stop talking there. We're not gonna stop going, but I'll stop going. <laughs> no, very good, Joe, and, and it's interesting. You know, lots going on there, right? So different, different size of projects, different activities there, right? So thank you very much for sharing. Prasant, any thoughts, any projects that you are working with in your organization, anything that you want to share as much as you can? So, so, yeah, a number of initiatives in the DLD space, uh, particularly in context of tokenization, um, I would probably talk about two different varieties from platform capabilities. So um, I think a number of you uh, may have already seen in the press that uh, uh, we, recently, um, uh, um, we recently issued a 50 million GBP bond uh, on our bond tokenization platform. That's called Orion. Uh, so basically, we uh, HSBC Luxembourg uh, is the central account keeper there, and it basically uses um, Lux jurisdiction uh, to allow us to move uh, uh, the bond tokens on the ledger as title transfer. So we allow you use that. And uh, on the cash side, uh, we basically generate um, uh, settlement tokens, and that basically allow us to do DVP. Uh, uh, Esther recently, uh, Esther just now mentioned about the DVP as a, as a benefit. So uh, that's a platform where we do native issuance. Um, uh, we do coupon payments, redemption, uh, and secondary trading. Uh, the second use case I can talk about is uh, commodities tokenization. So this is a use case where the platform is actually integrating with uh, a very mature ecosystem of uh, uh, traditional trade life cycle. Um, uh, basically, we, we, we issue the tokens and then back it with physical commodities, uh, and thereby we basically allow our clients to um, take benefit of uh, fractionalized commodities. Um, yeah, so those two use cases. That's great. That couple of good cases. Thank you very much for sharing, uh, Prasant. So, Esther, over to you. What do you have? Can, what can you share with us? Yeah, well, we actually also quite proud that we recently announced um, that we issued a tokenized bond on a public blockchain. So we used the Stellar protocol for it, and um, it was a, a tokenized bond for Midcorp. Um, and the unique thing about this specific deal was that it was the the entire process, so preparing. Um, placing and documenting um, was on chain. So it was a fully digital uh, bond that we issued. And um, I guess it's one of the first um, yeah, digital bonds, tokenized digital bonds um, in the Netherlands. That's great, that's fantastic. Another, another great example. I mean, as you guys can see, three, and, and I can add my organization as well, BNY Mellon, we have been doing uh, things as well on, on, the, on the digital side, on tokenization, right? So, this is, uh, you know, from traditional finance, this is now real. We have been talking for, you know, a number of years on, on activities, right? This is becoming real, and, and we do see that the, that the examples are, are becoming 
becoming real user cases, right? So thank you for sharing. Okay, so we have been talking about the benefits of tokens. We have been talking as well about the projects. Tell me about the challenges. How do you see, what, which, which are the main challenges that you have in mind? So maybe we we'll start with you, Prasant, from the technology point of view. Um, maybe I can address this from the platform perspective and then a little bit non-technology, if I may. So from, uh, if, you are, if you are going to embark on a mission to build a tokenization platform, uh, I think what you would see is that the build out is uh, not quite similar to a traditional, um, let's say, Java-based, microservices-based application. So if you work in a large organization, you would have some of the KPIs around how you incrementally deliver, um, release cadence, et cetera. So um, uh, be mindful to manage those expectations because you're not going to be, uh, I mean, at least our experience is that uh, it's not going to be, it's not going to be, um, you know, matching the, uh, some of the expectations around the traditional um, side. Um, again, on the platform side, uh, as I mentioned, uh, one of the use case around uh, commodities tokenization. So we, we, we had to basically uh, integrate our DLT layer with 13 different uh, systems internally. So interfacing with legacy, uh, it's, not, it's not super easy. So that's, that's definitely um, a challenge. Um, sort of going a little bit um, um, away from the platform and just looking at generally, uh, I think one of the challenges uh, we might see is that, um, you know, if uh, we all are, you know, running a number of initiatives and building our digital assets, so if everyone goes off and, you know, creates their digital assets on their own uh, private ledger, uh, what it brings is, of course, innovation, but also diversity in terms of your digital assets. Um, now, this might be challenging from, let's say, custody point of view, uh, because clients want to see a unified view of the traditional assets as well as digital assets. And if you have a vast diversity of the digital assets, it's going to be challenging. How do we, how do we bring along and, let's say, you know, got a single NPV for the whole client portfolio? Um, so that's, that's something uh, which would probably need uh, some sort of standardization. Oh, that's great, and, and, I, and I want to, I feel I, I feel I need to chip in here as a, from my, my role in BMW as the global custodian as well, right? We share your vision and the same challenges of uh, making sure that we have full integration between the job that we do with traditional assets, with the job that we are doing and we will do, with digital assets, right, and the, and the vision of integrating the whole thing and, and having or providing to clients one single view of, of, the, of the custody activities, I think is critical, right? So, but it's a challenge on itself from the technology that you are mentioning, right? So it's a great point, great point. So, Esther, I want to hear from you. I want to hear your legal mindset here, right? Because I know that we have a number of challenges there, right? So any things to share? Yeah, sure. As from from the legal perspective, of course, I guess what what we see, what we still um, see in the market, is a quite regular, uh, fragmented regulatory framework, and and I guess that a robust regulatory framework is key for um, yeah for the market infrastructure in, in general. So, um, for example, in Germany, we already have the Electronic Securities Act in place which allows for the issuance of bearer bonds, um, tokenized bearer bonds, of course. Um, and I think we also see quite DLT-friendly jurisdictions in Luxembourg and in France. However, we still face quite a fragmented regulatory landscape within the European Union. And, um, well, this has also been recognized by the European Union, and that's why they came up with these two new regulations that we heard about quite often already on this, uh, during this conference. So it's the market in crypto assets regulation on the one hand, so the MECA regulation, which is a sound legal framework for crypto assets that do not qualify as financial instruments. And on the other hand, and I think that's key for us, mainly tokenizing securities, is of course a DLT pilot regime, which is a regulatory sandbox 
um, for those crypto assets that qualify as financial instruments and which allows for um, licensing um, for market infrastructures um, and it gives exemptions from, from specific um, financial regulations such as CSDR, MIFID and MIFIR and which will already uh, apply as of March 2023, so quite, a, quite soon. And I'm pretty sure that this will definitely pave the way for, for digital assets in the European Union, because it's a, it's a great opportunity to, for um, financial, well, for, for market infrastructure um, to come up with new business models, and um, I think it will definitely um, pave the way for market growth. That's great, and this is the year of regulations coming in. Yeah. March is over the corner. It's going to give us more light on the regulatory perspective. So the challenges are there, but also we do see that gradually regulation is coming in and is giving a little bit more color uh, on, on, on what's going on, how are we going to organize ourselves, right? So, and particularly from the, from the traditional finance point of view for us, it is critical that we know you know, where, where are we, how are we going to operate and what is the regulatory framework, okay? That's a great point. Joe, over to you. What do you have? What, what are the challenges that you see from your perspective? Well, I'm really pleased that I'm, I'm speaking on this after um, Esther, the lawyer, has, because the regulation side of things are covered, which is nice. Um, but yeah, for, I mean, from our side, the challenges that we see, um, it, it's, it's, so in a big organization like JP Morgan, it, you, you have a bunch of teams working together. You've got technology, you've got product, you've got um, sales, you've got marketing, design, um, legal, compliance, um, your operate teams, your, you, you know, it's, it's an enormous group of people. And there's a saying, um, you know, well-known saying, it takes a village. Um, and so the thing that I think we've found challenging but also um, rewarding when we get it right is to bring everyone in on the journey of what you're trying to do how you're trying to do it, explaining the technology, explaining the concepts, working with people who, um, you know, maybe coming from this from a different angle than myself, who just wants to build stuff and, and you know, um, you know, maybe a bit gung ho. But it's like it, you got to bring everyone along with you on the journey. So that is a challenge, but it's it's a challenge worth like tackling head on, and it's a challenge worth embracing. Um, I would say outside of that, um, generally. The like inside and outside of blockchain over the past 12 months, it has been a busy and noisy time with many, many distractions. Um, and so you can see that attention can be divided away from some of the things that we might be wanting to do. Um, we don't know how that will evolve over time, um, but it's definitely something we've noticed. And um, regardless, we're, we're pushing ahead with the people that, that, we, um, that we find great use cases with and can partner with. Um, yeah, and, and I, I would leave it there. Great, thank you very much. Yo, thank if, you. I, yeah. if I could just add to the earlier point, so on the regulatory side, so our experience, particularly from challenges point of view, is that you know probably technology is, is relatively the easier part. So as you bring more and more parts of your product life cycle onto the chain, right? Um, we see that technology complexity increases, but the legal and regulatory is probably increases more. And rightly so, because you're not just, you know, digitizing the parts of your product lifecycle, you're moving the uh, business processes, and you're shifting risk on the chain as well. So, yeah, completely, the regulatory complexity is definitely... That's a great, that's a great point coming from a technology person and giving credit to the legal and regulatory colleagues, right? So that's, that's a great point. Uh, so, guys, we are running out of time. I have one last question. Let me tell you, I have been a, having a scan on the... On the uh, uh, colleagues here, and I have seen only one person having a siesta, and <laughs> he deserves that because I know he had a very wild night yesterday, right? So I, I think he's entitled to do that, but hopefully we have been sharing good stuff here to the, to the rest of the audience, so that's great. So last question to you, 2023, what is going to happen this year? How do you see adoption? How do you see things evolving? Where are the growth opportunities? Let's just start with you, Esther. Yeah, well, um, I guess that um, tokenization in general and, and market, market infrastructure in general requires scare, scale and interoper, interoperability, which is not an easy word for me. Um, however, 
I assume what, what we're still facing in the market is quite some isolated solutions. And I definitely hope that this will change within the next couple of years. Um, so um, I guess it's key to, to have, uh, to have um, yeah, interoperability in the market. And of course, from a legal perspective, I'm pretty sure that the DLT market, uh, the, the DLT pilot regime will definitely pave the way for new business models and I guess also for market growth. That's great. Great points. Thank you very much, Esther. Joe, over to you. 2023, what do you see? Um, so 2023 for us, um, we're going to focus on use cases. We're going to focus on what assets should we be tokenizing, what works, what are the... So we're looking essentially for Goldilocks zones of people who are ready enough and, and have that need. We're not just going to tokenize things you know, for fun. We want to work out what actually is like adding value. So searching for those like Goldilocks zones in terms of use cases, but also we've had success with our security services team and our like markets DLT team in terms of building out these products. The other thing we want to do for 2023 is look at how do we build with other groups, not just within JP Morgan, but outside as well. So, um, yeah, but we're quite excited for that. Um, yeah. That's great. The collaboration point, right? The collaboration in the ecosystem, I think, is, is fantastic what you're saying as well. And we're taking a lead, really, from, from the, that public space. The public space is about building with people. You can, you know, it, it's that ethos, I think, that we're trying to carry through as much as we can. We'll do it safely. We'll do it compliantly. We'll do it probably slowly because we're... We're a, a large bank, but we'll, we'll do it with as much sort of vigor as we can. Very good. That's great. Prasant, any thoughts from your side, 2023? Yeah, so, um, so we've, been, we've been involved in a number of uh, initiatives, and I think uh, we will continue on furthering our capabilities and developing new capabilities. Uh, but if I could answer that question, like externally, completely agree. How do various participants come together and uh, further that growth? So whether it's uh, to come together as uh, syndicates and offer new products, um, and then also uh, as uh, coming together and helping with the standardization, like the point we just uh, uh, agreed on, you know, how to uh, not fragment an existing ecosystem. Um, and if I could actually look at from uh, internally within the organization, uh, I think talent is a is a is a big thing. So how do we get the right talent? How do we motivate the set of uh, highly innovative uh, people within the organization and retain that? And uh, that helps us in executing our ideas. That's Thank great, Prasant. Thank you very much. So guys, we are running out of time, but I think it's a very nice way of wrapping up that we here you have uh, four uh, traditional financial players. We all believe that collaboration is the, the, right, the right thing to do, not, not only with the traditional finance, but also with the wider ecosystem, with the fintechs. And I think if we collaborate, we help each other, we connect with regulators and we work together, we will all win. So thank you very much, guys. I think a big round of applause to this audience. Thank you. Very good.